as predictions fail and explanations don't work out, you make it more complicated. You push it backward in time, you go under the covers. It's something that we couldn't have observed. We, we can't find this out. And the theory is always driving the ideas in spite of the evidence. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can uh, summarize this. First, with the mitochondria, it's, it's the powerhouse of the cells, where the cell gets all of its necessary energy currency, sometimes as I like to put it. And the mitochondrion is unique among cell organelles in that it actually has its own small circular piece of DNA. And when they started analyzing the DNA, they found it resembled uh, bacterial DNA. So this idea that, as you, as you put it, a, uh, a cell just gobbled up another bacterial cell and somehow that bacterial cell that was gobbled up transformed over time into a mitochondrion, maintaining some of its DNA and uh, they initially thought they had a potential ancestor lined up for what type of bacterial cell that was, the alpha proteobacteria. And as they tried to dig down further to try to identify maybe which grouping of those bacteria this, the, or the ancestor to the mitochondrion actually came from, they found that nothing was seeming to fit. Not even any of the alpha bacteria, proteobacteria, seemed to fit the pattern. And so now they're having to hunt, as it were, and say, well, it must have been something that existed before all these things. And as you're saying, the main problem with that is, well, we're certainly never going to be able to go back and find those things. There aren't any of those that seem to be existing today. Otherwise, we would have found something living <laughs> that I could compare. And we're just kind of left with nothing. And even then, I, I teach a college-level biology class for, for homeschoolers, an advanced biology class, and we talk about the origin of mitochondria, and, and it's in, as you say, it's in all the textbooks. And now all of a sudden, I'll bet you, even in a decade or so, we're not going to see this study pointed to. That that would be my guess. What do you think? <laughs> well, first of all, excellent summary, Ray. Thank you. That, that You captured the ideas very well. And um, I, I'm not sure if it'll be, uh, if we'll see it or not. What I will predict is the theory of evolution will still be held. Um, it's very resistant to falsification. And this little story, this little vignette, if you will, is a very good example that happens over and over and over, <laughs> where the expectations and explanations are falsified. They don't work out, and the theory is resistant. There's never a question of the theory itself. It's rather right. the explanation failed, let's bring in another explanation, and it always gets more complicated. So you're adding more epicycles to the theory continually. You know, compared to what Darwin thought up today, it's a much more complicated theory. It's just like the tax code. It's just more and more and more things added to it. You can hardly even keep track of all the parts, all the moving parts of evolutionary theory. And it's things like this that make that. So, yeah, the theory just keeps on chugging along in spite of empirical problems. Well, you know, uh, I get asked this kind of question frequently from audiences. Well, well, how can they think that evolution actually accomplished this or this or this or that? And I say, well, first you have to understand they're already assuming up front that evolution is true. Exactly. Therefore, therefore this structure had to have evolved somehow. Exactly. Biology is interpreted according to evolution through the lens of evolutionary theory. 